Howdy folks, Don Bruce here. So in our last video of how to add vehicles to Minecraft Transport Simulator, we talked about getting your model rotated and scaled correctly, as well as how to split parts off. In this video, we already have a model that has a whole bunch of parts that are split off, and with correct rotation and scale, so now I'll be showing you how to do a couple of somewhat finishing touches, at least as far as texturing and looking at some of the more complex part splitting offs that uh, might have issues. Uh, I know that was weird, but uh, I'll show you what I mean later on in the video. But I'm going to go through this just so we make sure everything's right before we get into the more complex system of how to add and define lights. So anyways, right now we have a very drab looking, but at least correctly scaled DC3. So in our case, we're going to obviously want to texture this model. Now, it depends on what model system you're using to create the model. Okay, it could be Block Bench or Techni or Tabula or Lens Toolbox or something else. I know people use Meta Sequoia, or you could be even using Blender. Anywho, whichever system you use to make a model, you do need to make sure that the texture will actually apply correctly. So, I'll just show you how to do this in Blender, and you may not even need to do anything with texture depending on what modeler you use to create the model and how it exports the OBJ model with its texture mapping. So, anywho, this particular model is added by Toolbox, and I can tell you that Toolbox does foul up the OBJ texture mapping, so this will be a good way to show you how to fix it. Anyways, the first thing you need to do is come down here to the left where you see these little three hashes and just drag to the right to get you another window. Now, this is a sense a second viewing port, so if I was to go to here and then go into edit mode, it kind of mirror images it and Whatever I click here, oh, hold on, let me go into face select mode, would show up over there. So it's basically a duplicate side, and I really don't care about that. What I want to know is I want to see how my textures are being applied. So what I go to do is down here to this little box, this is current editor type for this area, and I just hit UV image editor because we are editing the image. You can see right now there's a little box over here, and that corresponds to where this little shape corresponds to your PNG texture image. So if I click this one, I, where'd he go? Oh, over there. So you got this guy here, you got that guy there, there's probably some more all over, and so they correspond to the image being over there. Now, this right here is blank. What you're gonna wanna do before you try and mess with anything and get all freaked out is first open an image. So you go here to open, I've got the texture here in the downloads. It's Douglas DC3 Base Blue. Double click. So there we go. That's the texture image for this DC3 model. So if you scroll out, you'll see he's all over these like checkerboards. But again, the shape is over here to the right. Now, you can leave it over there. I suppose it won't cause you any harm. But I like to have everything over the boxes. That's just me. But I'll show you both ways how it doesn't make a difference. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is you select everything on this little plane here. You can use the A key to do it. And you can see how it's over here. So it basically goes off the texture. Now, sometimes, sometimes this is not scaled the same as what is over here. And if you have that, you will have problems. It does need to be scaled correctly. But you shouldn't have a problem if it's offset. And by offset, I mean if it's exactly one texture sheet over this way. So let me zoom in here. And so you see how this texture sheet begins right here and then goes all the way over here. And then if you had another one, you could just copy paste it over here. That's okay. Minecraft will just say, okay, you gave me texture value of two. Well, I don't know where that is, so I'm just going to take one off of it and put it over here. It kind of repeats the textures. But again, I'm picky. I like it to go over there. So either way, if you need to move this mapping, you can just hit the 
A key and grab it with the G key and put it around, but I'll show you again that it doesn't really matter both ways. So what I'm going to do here first is show texture, and it doesn't really show anything with it all selected like that. And... Oh, wait a minute, I forgot. But Blender doesn't show you the texture actually being here. It only shows up in-game. So if you do show texture mode, you'll see basically it shows nothing because it says, wait a minute, I got textures over here. I don't know what to do with that. So anyways, just because it doesn't show up in Blender doesn't mean it won't show up in-game. But again, just for sanity's sake, I'd say move everything over so it fits. Anywho, we'll go back over to object mode. I'll go back over here to this little texture map, and again, I want to can snap to pixels. I always put that on because this is Minecraft. We're not doing fractional pixels here. If you are, you're going to have a real fun time texturing things. So just grab it using the G key and move it, and as you can actually see, <laughs> the little funny textures over there in that plane are changing. So I'm going to scroll in, grab it, and you gotta get that lined up. There we are. So that's that. And what did I do wrong? Oh, I know what I did wrong. I dang it, I only selected that one shape, so I only put the texture to the one shape. Uh okay, let's try selecting this all again. Oy, 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 oy. So that's all selected. Then you gotta go back over here. I'll just do that again to make sure I'm doing that right. Open the texture again. There we go. I think that did it. Yeah. Yeah, because see there's a blue over here now and the blue here now. So that's that's good. And in that case, that does make me wonder. Oh, come on. Stop selecting that. I wonder if that would make a difference. I'm just going to go put it back here and see if that does make a difference. Ah, okay. So I didn't need to move it. Lesson learned, I guess. So, yeah. As you can see right here, it lines up just the same being over on that side of the texture map. So you do not need to move that texture. But the one thing you do need to do is make sure it's scaled correctly. If it looks like it's a different scaling, that will not work. But as far as translation... Not a big deal. So, anyways. So, again, you want to do this for the other things. So, if I go to the doors, again, you have to go into edit mode. Then, select everything by hitting A. Open up the texture again. And go to the rear door. I'm surprised there's not a blue line on this texture for that front door. That does kind of break the lines of the uh, aircraft, but also, why don't I see that? Oh, dang it, I needed to be in edit mode. I always forget that. Gotta be in, gotta be in edit mode. Well, no, I see that there, so. It means it goes that way. Let me open it again and see what happens. No, I guess there's just not a blue line texture on that door. That's surprising, but anyways, I'll just be what that is. So anyways, now you got your, uh, basically your texture mapped on most everything. Again, I could go over and do the little flap and aileron, but I'm really not gonna. Uh, you might notice that it's all dark over here, so that's because you got this weird little lamp here that Blender decides it needs, so... Shiny, spooky little lamp, playing glow in the dark. Anyways, I find the lamp annoying, so I just delete it. And then everything's nice, bright, and shiny, and I can see if I forgot any textures or anything. So, I mean, right now you can see that's all texture, but then that's blank. And, of course, that's texture, but these are blank, so that's going to need to have the textured applied. Again, you just go click it, then you go and you hit open, and then off you go to the races. So, not big deal there. But anyway, so the texture is on now, and we're going to assume you textured all the surfaces. But there are a few things you want to check, and one of them is the fact that you're not missing any, for lack of a better word, thickness 
on your movable parts. For example, I'm just going to go use this uh, door here that I textured. And if I go and I view it from the side, come on, and just grab it, you'll see that there's actually a front and a back or inner and outer, but there's actually nothing in between there. It's just two shapes. There's not like, I guess for lack of a word, a, a thickness, a bezel around it. And that's because when you're making parts, again, they're cubes. So you have to make sure to grab all the parts instead of just the two inners and outers. So what I'm going to do here is the parts were in the body model, and I'll just make the front door turn invisible and go here into the body model. And this is easier to do if you're not in textured mode. So I'm going to switch back to solid. And so you see here how you have like little flashing almost? That's because there's two faces down there. And let me go into edit mode. It's easier to see. So there's two faces down there. One is going to be the face that faces upwards for the strike plate of the door, but the other one is going to be the bottom of the door that faced down to complete the actual door. So what you need to do is you need to find out which face that is and put it in the door part instead of the body part because otherwise you're going to open the door and your door is going to have holes in it. So what you can do to make your life easier is hit the N key to bring up the normals pane. Then just go here and turn on face normals and you can hit N key to make him go away or let me make him, yeah it's too big, right about there. So that'll bring up the normal. So you can see the, this basically points where you have a face. So on the outside, they point outside. Over here on the inside, they point inside. And you have right up here on the top, one that points down for that top plate. And then you've got a couple that this guy points here because he's part of this box. And that one points there. But you see you have this little, let me zoom in a bit, this little dot right here. Well, that's close enough. So you got this little dot here, and that's because he's part of this long face here that's the door jam. So if I, there we go, if I select that and grab him, that's going to, obviously, I mean, you can see there's that little line there. He's facing this away. So this is part of the door that I need to put with the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select him, hit P, and that'll just throw him over here. So he's not part of the body model anymore. So again, you can go and do the same thing with others. Uh, here's, I don't know if that's pointing down. Let's see, one of these is pointing down. Is it that one? Yes, so that one's pointing down. So that was part of the door because its face is down. So again, you hit P by selection, that goes away. Now the interesting thing, and I noticed this, is this doesn't have one on the bottom that's pointing up which tells me there's actually not a face for the bottom strike plate here. I don't know if it got deleted or something. I know sometimes if you use the, uh, oh, what is it? Like mesh cleanup or move duplicates. If you do that before you split everything, sometimes it'll delete your jams and doors, or if in this case, it can also delete your little ailerons and elevator and all that, uh, all the little parts in between them, so I recommend you wait to the very end to do that. But uh, I, eh, maybe that's what got it. Maybe it didn't exist to begin with. But I mean, as you can see right here, we got another one. So no, no, yeah, okay. So that, yeah, I got the whole face. Again, P by selection. Again, he goes over there as a new face. Let's see if I've got one up here on the top and doesn't look like it actually I don't see a little line poking up there so maybe that got deleted too but anyways so I've got those three and I'll have to do for now so you go over here you find which one you're not using and okay, so that's the whole body model because I think it was yeah, 001 was the whole body model and obviously we want that to be still there so you can take this guy and then hold shift and hit him and then hit him and then go to the front door and then object and then join and now if you take the door off and again i'm not looking in the right direction 
take the door off, you'll see he actually has thickness on him because we put those parts and made them part of the door. But again, if you go into edit mode and you were to apply the texture to him, you would find that those door, well, those, I don't know if those door parts would have it. Actually, yes, they would, because they were part of the main plane when we applied the texture, and so texture's the same. We just moved the shapes from the main plane body to the door. And if I had to guess, probably some of the other parts here have that same issue. Let me see if the rudder has the same issue. Yep, the rudder's missing a bit out of it, too, so I'd, I'd be willing to bet there's a parts up here and then a part here and probably the same for the other control surfaces that needs movement but again nothing major you won't notice it too much unless you're doing bigger airplanes or if you have a door and you're walking next to it I'd say doors are probably the biggest glaring thing you'll see especially if you're inside a car but other than that that's pretty much it so you got your texture you get the little details fleshed down and when you get done with that you can some see me in my next video where I'll be explaining how to get these nifty little lights down here to work and you'll have your plane all lighted up and that will pretty much wrap you up for your model. But in the meantime, work on that and I will see you in the next video. This is Don Bruce signing off.